So, uh, this is uh, my short video about the experience or community um, of dairy entropy. And um, I guess it isn't really so much of a video, it's more of a audio, but I don't really wish to show my face on the screen. So, it, well, in any case, people seem to feel that a video is more, is somehow uh, more explaining relating um, of experiences they seem to feel more connected to someone when they are talking in a video I don't know why so mm -hmm, I guess that I am making this video in hope that it make people feel more connected to the experience of dairy entropy uh, as a as a experience that a person has instead of they read on the internet it is a kind of a you know, they just see what they hear about the experience and is not so real to them. So, what is this experience that is called teriantropy? Um, well, it is simply meaning, uh, you know, animal person or animal human. And I can say that this experience to me is similar to we have the folk tales in a classic mythology of a fox wom fox woman or a swan woman or similar they look like a human but inside there is an animal and this tales are often about the experience of the the animal trying to live as a human in some way and they have uh, complicated and confusing you know uh, experience and so the simplest way to say it is that we feel like we are these animals but inside of this human body that has this experience of of being human but also also a non-human mind or self inside this um, and in the same way we have uh, many of the struggles of what you can say the animal in the folktale is like uh you know they are they are struggling with being caught between the two worlds um and you might say in this case well you know aren't we all a kind of animal human humans are animals well you know yes humans are animals but this is uh, something that is a uh, particularly deeper than uh, just connecting with that that human side of yourself that is a more wild or, or a primate uh, ape you know this is a connection to something that is often it is not primate it is something else and the only thing that you can say about it is that we know from a long time often since beginning childhood that's there is something that is not the primate. It is something that is not the human instincts, but it feels like the animal instincts. And many people have related this to the mythology of uh, werewolves, uh, were animals, and so in the history, the Darian community also has been called the were community, um, based on that that myth. But of course, you know, we are not like the experience of the myth. We are not physically shape-shifting we are not we are not wild in the sense of you know going out and destroying people or causing a physical damage you know um but in many ways this experience has been like the mythological werewolf uh, trapped between the human and the animal world and never able to quite be either of these mm. And when people say often to us, well, you know, a human always has this animal side. It is kind of a trying to brush away this truth of this experience. Um, and they will say, well, people say, you know, a human, you know, he is strong like a lion or he is, you know, tricky like the fox or he is, you know, they have these metaphors as wise like an owl and they say, well, it is just a kind of comparison. And then if you say that, no, this is a different experience, you know, then they, I think you are claiming, okay, so I am physically a, 
a, a wolf or a hawk and I go and hunt in the night, you know. And it is these two kinds of metaphor. And my friend, mm, one of my friends has mentioned this, you know, we have these these two kinds of metaphor that we think about you know we say this this is a chair and so we mean this is physically it is literally it is literally a chair and we expect it to act and look and behave in all ways like a chair um and then when we say you know he is a lion then we mean it in a very metaphorical way we don't expect him to behave in all ways like a lion you know we just have some traits of the lion that we say is like him um strong and brave and and whatever and when people see the Therian community they look at us and they are confused because well we are not just saying that we are the brave or strong like the lion or whatever but we are not saying that we are the the little physical experience like the chair uh, and so they don't know exactly what we are saying and I say that it is somewhere in between. It is not simply the metaphor, mm, but it is. It is more. It is more than a metaphor, but it is also not exactly the physical reality. It is something, and this is why often many therianthropes have r related this experience to the soul, because there is not a a finger you can put on it. You can't really say why it is what it is this thing that is in between that you can't catch you know often people will call that like a, a soul you know and we don't know N we don't know whether that is the the truth of the experience who who knows about the soul anything metaphysical it's it's too hard to know but that is what many people have, have put on it that the soul or some internal nature is like the the non-human animal and the non-primate animal although some some Therians do associate with, with primates, so I don't really mean to slur the primate in this experience, um, but only that it is not common. It is most common to say a non-primate animal. So about this, you know, what is the point? What What is the point of making that recording? So some people say it is like a, you know, they have this experience, so it is like an animal, you know, well, so what? You think, well, they can just have that experience. What is the, what is the point in talking about it? Well, for me, I guess that the point in talking about it is that it is very easy to feel alone in this society, having this experience. You know, when people have an experience where their identity inside is different from the outside, often they feel a lot of stress. Um, they want the world to sort of look at them and see this identity. And, and you might think, well, that is wanting attention, but... You won't say this about, you know, a transgender person or anything like this who really feels that they are this one person inside and the society doesn't see it on the outside. You won't say they are seeking attention for just wanting the society to look at the self and see the self. It is a basic need for, and you can say, well, there's a basic human need, but in our experience, it is a basic more than human need. It is a basic any intelligent creature need to be seen as what we are inside and we want people to look at us and see you know our experience and even many therianthropes have looked at this and said well you know human society is not going to see us the way we are just just deal with it but it is hard for many of us to deal with we are experiencing this identity that is not the same as our physical bodies and we just wish for a day that someone can look at us and see the experience of what we are having and just simply accept that we feel as we are what we are. And I don't know how to put it better than that. Sorry, I'm not very good with words. Mm. Okay, this is running to nearly 10 minutes, so I'm going to close it now. Um, but yes, I guess that is my first story about Neriantropy and i probably come back to do more of this later, so... That's for me. Bye-bye.